Welcome to the Living Witness Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Derek Thomas, and my prayer today is that the message blesses you and inspires you to be all that you can be, to reach the world with the life-giving word. Enjoy today's message. God bless. Today, God does have a word for us today, and I'm not going to be before you long. Amen. I will preface this by saying that this word is a word that is a drop-in on the conversation that God was having with me. Uh-huh. About my situation. Yes. Before y'all start speculating here, before y'all start speculating out there, the people that need to know what I mean when I say my mm-hmm. situation, know my situation. So if you don't know my situation, I love you. Just listen. All right. That's right. That's right. That clears up any confusion. Amen. That's right. What you'll find written in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 6 through 9, I would that if you can, please stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the same. What you find written reads in this fashion. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age Uh who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Yes. But as but as it is written, eye has not seen, mm-hmm. nor ear heard, mm-hmm. nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Yes. As you take your seats, find somebody close to you. Look them in the eye and tell them this. Tell them, neighbor. Neighbor. I know something. I know something. You don't know. You don't know. Amen. Be seated. I know something you don't know. Now, let me give you context so you understand the magnitude of this. This word came to me in the midst of my prayer time. Uh Uh-huh. I was in prayer specifically regarding my situation, Pastor. Come and on. in the midst of the prayer regarding the situation, uh-huh. I, I was reaching a point of, of, of critical mass in my mind. Now, now critical mass, for those that, 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 that may not understand what it is, critical mass is a scientific term that means that when all the elements are at the point of exploding, uh-huh. and they interact, it causes an explosion that does more destruction than you can handle. So when you get to the point of critical mass, you're in a very, very dangerous state. I reached the point of critical mass in the midst of my prayer. I reached the point of critical mass in my heart. I reached the point of critical mass in my logic. I overloaded myself in all the stuff that I didn't need to know. And in the midst of me crying out to God in my critical mass state, he said, son, I need you to be quiet because I know something. Yes. Come on. Come on. Then you don't know. Yes. See, you're looking at all the stuff. You're looking at all the things that are around you. You're looking at all the things that you can see. You're looking at all the things that you can touch. You're looking at the things that your natural senses have plugged into. But what I need you to know, the thing that I know that you've forgotten, that I know that the world doesn't know, is that while you're looking at the beginning of the matter, I'm already at the end of the matter. Congratulations. Yes, yes. with you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See, what happened here? is this word was written in the midst of a letter to a church uh-huh. that's a lot like us. It was a melting pot church, y'all. Jesus. You had rich folks there. You had poor folks there. Uh-huh. You had folks of status there. Amen. You had folks of means there. Yes. You had the average Joe and Josephine there. Uh-huh. But they were all there for a common purpose. Yes. They were all there to move on up in their understanding mm-hmm. of who God is. Amen. Amen. They were all there to do like George and Weezy. We want to move on up. Uh huh. We want to move on up to get closer to God. Yes. We want to move on up to a better place. We want to move on up to a better condition. Amen. We want to move on up to a better mindset. Yes. We want to move on up to a better heart set, a better spirit set, a better place so that I can be more effective, so I can be more potent for the kingdom, so I can be used by God in a greater way. How many yes. of you know that when you put yourself in that position, you become public enemy number one to the devil. You become public enemy number one in hell, and he's going to send everything against you to stop you from doing what it is that he wants you to do. And he's going to yes. try to discourage you and try to discredit you and try to discount you and try to write you off and try to shorten your time. 
But I'm here to let you know that the thing that I found out in my prayer time that the devil doesn't know is that he's not my boss. I'm yes. his boss. Yes. Come on. Come on. Let's speak. Because it's not how you start in a situation. Yes. How you finish. That's right. The situation. Yes. And life is not a sprint. Uh-huh. Life is a marathon. Yes. And that not only applies in the natural, but that applies even more so in the spirit. Amen. Yes, Lord. The first lady tapped into something because again. Uh-huh. This week was one of those one of these. Uh-huh. Okay. One thing I said to my boys when this journey started, this phase. Uh-huh. Said I'll always be honest with you. Yes. I'll always be open with you. Yes. And I'll always communicate with you. Uh-huh. Because that's important. Yes, it is. Because it's in those times. Mm-hmm. Even in the valley times. Yes. You grow. Mm-hmm. As you share your blessing to other people. Yes. As you share the days that may not be the best, you're a blessing to other people. Because Amen. it's in those times that like in a marathon, God gives you those little cups of refreshment that you need to keep on going. The first yes. cup of refreshment that he gave me is to help me understand that being peculiar, son, is your superpower. Amen. Yes, yes. So you got to understand and understand this, that what the thing that you need to know that the devil doesn't know is that being peculiar is your superpower. He yes. wants you to look strange. He wants you to look crazy. He wants you to look like you don't fit. He wants you to look like you don't make no sense. He wants you to look like yes. a square peg in a round hole. And I'm letting you know, son, it's okay. You keep on being square yes. in that round hole. Because while they're looking at you being square, they're trying to figure out how you got in that round hole. Yes. While you're in a situation where you look like you don't yes. fit, they're trying to figure out how you're being blessed, how you advance. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You're doing it because you're different. You're doing it because God picked you out. Uh-huh. To get picked up. Yes, Lord. You're doing it because God chose you. Uh-huh. In the midst of the situation. Yes. You're doing it because you're under divine consideration. Because as long as you're under divine consideration, that means that everything that, that, that God put in you is more than enough to bring you through whatever, whatever it is you're dealing with yes. on the outside. Amen. Yes, Lord. God picked you out to let you go through this. Amen. God equipped you. Yes. To deal with this. Amen. So would it not stand to reason that if he's done it, your speech is going to sound different. Yes. Your, your dialect spiritually is going to sound different. Mm-hmm. What you put together is going to sound foreign to some folks. Yes. But this is why it says that we speak wisdom uh -huh. among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. Yes. See, if you're in the world, but not of the world, mm -hmm. would it not stand to reason that your language would be one that's heard in the world? Yes. But until explained, will be understood. Mm -hmm. See, part of being peculiar is being a magnet for attention. Part of being peculiar is, like I said Tuesday in Bible study, it's like being a rock sitting out there in a bed of rocks that's just moving and shaking. There's no wire plugged into it. There's no battery inside of it. There's no power source doing it that man can see. Yet all the gyrating is doing, all the moving around is doing is drawing attention. And the more people see it move, and the more people see it bounce around, and the more people hear it buzz, the more people come look at it. That's how we are, church. God wants us to be different. He yes, wants us to be peculiar. Yes. He wants us to be willing to let God use us just as we are. He wants us to be okay with not getting in. He wants us to be okay with being on. He wants us to be okay singing when everybody else is zagging. He wants us to be okay turning left when yes, everybody else is turning yes. right. He wants us to be okay being up in the midnight hour when everybody else is asleep. He wants us to be okay allowing him to be God because when we allow God to be God in our yes, lives. Yes, yes. That's when God can show up. Amen. And do big things through our lives. Amen. I learned a long time ago that these lives that we live are nothing more than lives as cups with holes in the bottom of them. Yes. God fills us up so that everywhere we go, he can use us to pour into somebody else. Amen. And we got to understand that what the devil would understand is that every time we pour into somebody else, uh -huh. we're making the atmosphere conducive. 
Yes. For more spiritual birth to take place. Amen. Amen. We're making the room sterile, Pastor. For more people to begin to bear down and push. Yes. We're making the atmosphere ready, mothers. For people to get there in the position to get in the birth position for those ministries. Get in the birth position for those miracles. Get in the birth position for those breakthroughs. Yes. Get in the birth position for those elevations. That's what God has us as a church. We've gone through the time of pain. We've gone through the time of struggle. We've gone through the time of wondering why. We've gone through the time of speculating what if. It's time for us to get in the birth position and push. God has a new dimension for us here. God has yes. new work for us to do here. God has new faith for us to conquer here. God has new territory for us to take here. And in order to do that, we've got to be in a position to be all that God has called us to be. And we might look crazy to some folks. We might look odd to some folks. But God has us in a position to be used by him. And when people look at you saying what's going on, just say I'm letting you know that I know something you don't know. Yes, yes. Come on, come on. What I know is what Peter 2 9 and 10 says. Uh huh. I know that I'm part of a chosen generation. Yes. I know. I know. That I'm part of a royal priesthood. Yes, Lord. I know. Yes. That I'm a resident of a holy nation. Amen. I know. I know. That I'm one of his own special people. Yes. So that I can proclaim the praise of him who called me out of darkness uh -huh. into his marvelous light. Yes. I know. That I was once not part of nothing. Uh huh. But now I'm part of something big. Something. Now I'm part of the household of faith. Yeah. Now I'm counted as a child of God. Yes. Now, Lord. if you thought I was odd before, wait till you see me doing the stuff God's going to have me do next. Yeah. If you think yeah. what you saw before was something, wait till you see what comes next. And that's what God had to remind me. So, in the midst of your situation, I know you're going through, but I need you to look at it like I'm looking at it. If you thought you were doing something before, you wait till what you do next. If you thought you were making a dip in the kingdom of darkness before, you wait till you see what happens, what you're going to do next. If you thought that your ministry was pulled before, you wait and see what I'm going to do next. But you got to get through this season. I yes, know it's tough for yes, you, but I yes. know something you don't know. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What I know is I've prepared you uh -huh. for this season. Yes, sir. When I was little, I wasn't a good one. Uh huh. But I was a Cub Scout. I was thinking, I wasn't a good one. <laughs> My natural problem was I was too busy trying to chase around the girls' house. Uh huh. But the spiritual problem was, and I didn't need everybody to catch this. The spiritual problem was when many of us lie. We don't realize that the preparation that God has for us is not from without. Uh huh. It's from within. Yes. yes. See, the Boy Scouts have this saying: "Be prepared." Be prepared. Uh huh. That means whatever's coming your way, you ready. Whatever you think you might face, uh -huh. you ready. Another person put it this way: Get ready, so when it's ready, you ain't gotta when, when get, be ready. So when it's ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Yes. Because the time that you're taking to get ready when it's ready means that people may stop being because you weren't ready. Amen. What I mean is this. God has put into us, and this is what he told me. I hear your prayers. Uh-huh. I understand your concern. Yes. I see the gravity of the situation. Mm -hmm. But what you got, what you forgot is that no matter how big you deem the situation is, I'm bigger than any circumstance that you face. I'm yes. bigger than any situation that's before you. I'm bigger than any challenge, no matter how tall it is. I'm bigger than any struggle, no matter how wide it is. I'm bigger than any than any test, no matter how deep it might seem. And yes. what I need you to do is remember that everything that you need is already put in you. My word says that I've given to every man, not some I have, but I've given to every man the measure of faith. My word says that if you're able to stand on my word, and if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves yes. and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then and only then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. I put everything in you that you need. I've given you the keys of the kingdom. So yes. you can find what you don't need to be in your way. You can lose what you need to help you get over. Yes. You, you got everything that you need. Learn how to use the keys I've given you. Yes, Lord. 
See, I know something that you don't know. Yes. And what I know is, the pastor said it Friday, you are built for this. Uh-huh. Ford's got a, a campaign for the F-150, F-150 built for a tough. Uh-huh. I ascribe that each of us as believers are built kingdom tough, amen? Yes. See, we built kingdom tough. Amen. That means you like a commercial when the thing got to go off-road and just bounce it up and down. We got to go through that. Yes. We go through tests and trials. But we were given an object lesson. We were given an illustrated sermon of what that looks like and what we look like and what Jesus looks like. You know the story when the ship was on the water and it was doing this on the water uh -huh. and the folks were downstairs asleep and they woke up tripping. Oh, Lord, we're going to die. I'm paraphrasing here. Oh, Lord, we're going to die. But here comes Jesus walking on the water saying, peace. Be still. Be still. But here's the thing. In the midst of that discourse, he told Peter, or well, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me come out on the water. Uh-huh. Jesus said, come, come on. And what happened was, in the midst of that storm, because in that instant, Peter realized that he was prepared. Yes. In that instant, because remember, he didn't get the name Peter until he had demonstrated that everything that he needed was already in the house. Yes. Because Jesus asked him, who do men say I am? Well, you this, you that, you the third. But who do you say I am? Yes. Amen. Peter in that moment understood that he was not like everybody else. He understood in that moment he was a, he was a, a square peg in a round hole. He understood in that moment that God is doing something great in me. He understood in that moment that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, yes. now I can trust you. Let me prepare you for what's coming your way. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. So whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever yes. you loose on earth is loose in heaven. I don't care if sickness comes your way. You can bind it up because the word says by his strength. Here. I don't care if fear comes your way because the word says God has not given me a spirit of fear, but what a power, love, and a sound mind. You've got the capacity to lock down those things that are not meant for you and to unlock those things that are meant for you. What I know that you need to understand is yes, the victory is imminent for you, yes, yes Lord, not because of who you are, yes, but because of who I am, yes. Don't forget who I am. Yes. yes, Lord. Because as long as you remember who I am, uh -huh. you'll always be prepared. Yes. Because remember, you got to be ready at all times. Yes. So that when your adversary is ready, uh -huh. you ain't got to get ready. That's right. Because the time that you're taking to get ready could be your spiritual demise. Uh huh. Because life and death are in the power. Of the tongue. Amen. You ever have a situation sneak up on you? And it surprised you. And before you hear, realize what you said. Your mouth is saying something you had no business saying. Jesus. Oh, uh, this is another one that happened to us. So let me just let me just keep on going. So because <laughs> words carry weight, yes. You don't want to put negative weight on the burden that you're carrying. Amen. Because here again, be prepared. The word says that Je Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Uh -huh. And I'll give you, he didn't say give you work. I'll yes. give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Yes. And learn of me because I'm meek and lowly in heart. And you'll find rest for your soul. Why? Because my yoke is what? It's easy. easy. And my burden is light. Mm -hmm. Which means if what you're carrying is heavy now, the last thing that you're going to do when you're in your right mind is add more weight when you're struggling with the weight that you already got. But That's we do right. that sometimes with the adverse words that we speak. But if we're prepared, we are always mindful. Yes. The life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yes, Lord. So God let me know in my prayer time. I know that it might seem like more than you can handle. And I know that it might seem like more than you can bear. But the one thing that I know that, that, that the enemy doesn't know is the same thing I want to let you know that the devil don't know. Uh-huh. And that's this. That I've charged you, as 2 Timothy says in the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 1. I've charged you before me, God says, uh -huh. and the Lord Jesus Christ is going to do all the church. I've charged you to preach the word. Yes. I've charged you to be the living, living epistle of me. Uh -huh. I've charged you to do it in season. I've charged you to do it out of season. I've charged you to tell them what they like. I've charged you to tell them what they don't like. I've yes. charged you to rebuke. I've charged you to correct. I've charged you to instruct. I've charged you to put this thing in order. And I've charged you to do it because the people don't even realize that a time is coming where they're going to get caught up in what they hear and what they like. And they're going to turn their backs on me. They're going to get caught up so much in being popular.
popular that they're going to turn their backs on me. They're going to get so focused on being liked by everybody else that they're going to turn their backs on me. And I'm here to let you know, I don't care how peculiar you might see. I'm here to let you know, as long as you're prepared, as long as you're ready, as long as you're ready, when the enemy yeah, comes in like yeah. a flood, you ain't got to get ready. Because the word says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that I'll lift up a standard yeah. against them. Don't you worry about what you're facing. Glory, don't you glory. worry about what you heard. Don't you worry about what they told you. You remember that I told you that you are more than a popular through me yeah. because I yeah. love you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So by this time, I was trying really hard not to wake everybody in the house up. Uh-huh. In my prayer time. Lord, like son, hold it together just a little bit longer because I need to share one last piece of information with you. Uh huh. The enemy's gonna try to come. Yes. And make you doubt. Yes, yes. What you're hearing. Mm hmm. That's why I love God so much. Amen. Yes. My wife tells me that I need to turn sections of my brain off because it always works over time. <laughs> so, what God did is He took some of those screens in my head that works over time. Uh huh. He put, he put a collage up there. Yes, Lord. Of times in my life mm. where he intervened. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Where I was heading headlong yes. into destruction. And as he showed it, he played this underneath as a crawler. He played. Uh, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Uh huh. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew. And this party put in all caps. For if, but for had they known, uh -huh. they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And he did that to let me know that you've got to be fully persuaded in what I'm telling you. Yes. You can't waver to the left. You can't waver to the right. The enemy's going to do all he can to add more clips to this video. But I don't want you to pay attention to the video. I want you to pay attention to the crawler. That even if the very elect at that time didn't have sense enough to, to, to not get duped by the enemy. Because if they had known what would have happened. If they had known what yes. would have taken place. If the devil had known what would have happened had he not persuaded those folks to do what they did, he never would have done it. Yes, yes. Because it meant his own demise. And what the father was letting me know is that, son, in the midst of where you are, I, the one thing that I need you to know that they don't know mm -hmm. is that being fully persuaded yes, in my way yes. equates to your pathway. Uh huh. To eternal life and glory. Amen. Yes, yes. What you got to understand is, it's a zero-sum proposition. As long as you pour yourself out yes. and let me be God in you, mm -hmm. you will have eternal life. Yes. Because you've taken everything that would hinder me from moving you in your life out of the way. You've taken every stumbling block of offense out of your life so I can have my way. You've taken every trivial thing that's a roadblock out of your life so I can have my way. You yes. found yourself making every day Pentecost Sunday. When I tell you to bear it down, you're bearing down. When I tell you to push, you're pushing. It might not make any sense, but I need you to be in the proper position. It may not make any sense, but remember, don't step out of my will. Because yes. if you step out of my will, you're contrary to me. Yes, Lord. God needs us to understand that even in the midst of your situation, uh -huh. you can rejoice, amen? Oh, yes. You can rejoice because success and failure they both start in the same place. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? <laughs> Take a wild guess. It starts the mind. Mm -hmm. It starts that gray matter between your ears. Yes. It's a decision that you make. Amen. Educators in the room understand that no knowledge is power. Amen. Amen. Knowledge equates to one's ability to do or not do. Yes. Remember, if we've been prepared with the keys of the kingdom and we got everything that we need to lock up the things we don't want and unlock the things we do want, but we don't take the time to learn how to use the keys, you're going to be walking around with a whole bunch of keys making a whole yes. bunch of doors. Yes. 
And the problem is, there's a whole bunch of people that have said yes to Jesus that are playing all around on the earth, not doing anything to damage the kingdom, make a whole, making a whole lot of noise, shouting loud and saying nothing. Yeah. God is saying, I don't need all that noise. What I need is action. What I need you is to be about my business. Yeah. What I need you is to get serious about doing the work of ministry. What I need you is to come and sit under me. Come and let us, as the word says, reason together. I need you to sit down with me. I need you to let me educate you. I need yes, you to let Lord. me give you some understanding. I need you to let me give you some insight and I need you to do this to let me do this so that you will be fully persuaded. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because so what I know, the one thing that I know that I'm telling you now that the devil don't know uh -huh. is how it's in Romans 8, 38 and 39 that you are persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor thing present, yes. nor things come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. So he let me know, son, I know your situation might look bleak to you. Son, I know that it's something more that you ever face in your life. Son, uh -huh. I know that it's a challenge bigger than you've ever gone through. Son, I know that the crutches that you had at points in time in your life are no longer there. Son, I know that it's something you might share tears over. Son, I know that it's something that might scare you a little bit. But I, but I want you to understand this. Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com, or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness.